cracking everybody new video so this morning um by the way it's labor day happy labor day uh, hopefully everybody has made it through so far safely and is having a great time today is a day to rest up and uh get ready get back on the grind tomorrow but anyways so like i was saying this morning i was um laying in bed this hot ass heat wave still and i was wondering okay what what do i want to put out today sunday is usually a slow day um everybody's recuperating but today is monday so in my mind i'm still off work so i thought it was sunday um but as i was strolling i caught it's weird how things pop up you know, I'm really um, intrigued by the way that the Japanese, a lot of Japanese have adopted our culture, the Rasa culture. They're into the low riding, the tattoos, you know, the whole thing. And so I was watching this thing. One popped up and I said, you know what, let me watch this. And it was a, a guy, his name was Hide, I believe. And he was being interviewed and he's living in LA right now. But he's from Japan, right? And um, they asked him, you know, the... The reason why Japanese are drawn to the Mexican culture the way they are and um, so he said what you know I've heard other people say he said that you know it's it's the love of family and it's it's the love that they have the kind of heart they have you know and this and that you know and and <clears throat> you know like the the Japanese are very uh, stoic you know the, uh, apparently in their custom you know you don't you know you don't show emotion um you don't you're not free with the i love yous and all that and, you know for rasa that's the majority of us that's that's our thing man you know we're very uh loving people you know very um emotional people right but then he went on to talk about something and he said his words he said you know uh my big homie got busted out here in California and did some time. And immediately when he said that, it reminded me of somebody, right? And I was like, oh man, I remember this Japanese dude, you know? And then he said these, again, his words. You see the title of the video? And I titled it because of his words. He said, yeah, he was Yakuza and then became a Southsider, right? And I was like, Hold up. Again, it reminded me of the same person, but we never, you know, nobody knew of the, you know, the Yakuza thing as far as I was aware, right? So I was like, hmm, I wonder. And then he said his name. I'm going to go ahead and put a link. I'm going to put the tag, you know, somewhere. It's going to be here or here. I don't know. I still get confused of where it pops up. But you guys can go and you can watch the video and you can see the, the, the man's name that he, he mentions that he refers to, right? And that's what today's video is about. I was there. I met that individual. I knew that individual. So, I mean, he already said his name, so I'm going to say his name. His name was Kane, right? And I remember I had got out of the shoe June 29th of 1997. And the reason why I remember for those, how does he remember that? I got arrested for my murder on June 29th of 1993. I had, so when you go to the shoe, you get a MEPD, like a, or your MERD, when, not MEPD, it's a MERD, minimum, minimum eligible release date from the shoe, right? And they calculate it, you know, your, what you got busted for, you know, carries this many months in solitary and then it can be aggravated, you know, for other things. And, you know, you have a pegada, you catch another one, they're going to go ahead and, and, you know, your first one will be 15 months, maybe, maybe. Second one will be 24. And it just, they aggravate it, right? But you get a, a date on your, on your um, shoe assessment form. Three different shoe terms that I got. My release date was June 29th. Weird. Um, but anyways, that's why I remember I got out on June 29th, uh, 1997. Kane got out uh, 
I want to say within a week or two of me, maybe it was a month, whatever. But I remember seeing him, and he was a he was a cut up uh, Asian dude, right? And for whatever reason, he came, walked up to me, and he was like, "Hey, you a homie?" And I was like, tripped on him. I was like, I didn't understand what you know. What what was he like? Did he think I was an other? Is what I was thinking, right? And I was like, "What's up?" And I go, I go, "Who are you?" And he goes, "Oh, I'm Kane." He goes, I, I, "I'm I'm a." I have to talk to somebody, right? And he goes, I'm a homie, but I have to talk to somebody. And I was like, who you gotta talk to? And he goes, look, and again, look, and in no way am I trying to be disrespectful to anyone. This was that man's story. He may see this and uh, he'll know the legitimacy of what I'm saying. He said, look, when I came in the system, the cops labeled me as the other because I'm Asian. He said, but I'll just say I don't want to get into it. He had a bad taste in his mouth regarding the others. He felt that they didn't carry themselves to a standard that he wanted and that the Raza from Southern California were exceeding the standard that he expected. Right? And so he said he, uh, Wherever he was at, I want to say he was in New Folsom, right? If I remember the story right, what he told me, I think he was in New Folsom, and um, he raised his hand in his in his car that he was in, you know, the other car, and uh, because he didn't want to run with them anymore, he didn't want to have anything to do with those that were around him there. And um, once he got to the shoe, um, he talked to one of the legends, right? And told him straight out, like, look, um, I want to run with the Mexicans from Southern California because I like the heart that they have and the discipline that they have, you know, this, this, and that. So he's telling me, you know, I have a weed line that I need to give to whoever's, you know, taking care of this spot. Can you tell me who that is? And I was like, I cannot. But what I will do is um, I'll get at somebody and see if they want to send somebody to you. If you have a weed line, they need to get that. So he was like, all right, thank you. And so that happened. You know, I, you know, walked around a little while, hit different spots, because, you know, you'd never want to show, you never, only a dummy goes straight to who it is. You know, you got to make sure you hit different spots, because you don't know. You know what I'm saying? And anyways, so they got the wheel from him, and it was put out there. He was, uh, you know, he was a homie. He was, uh, if I remember right, he was representing the, the SGV. One of the valleys, I'm almost positive, was SGV. And um, one thing that I remember is back then, mostly everybody, if you smoked, you smoked Bugler, right? Because Bugler was five bucks for a fucking big old thing like this, you know? Um, and uh, that's what you saw, bottles walking around smoking Rollies, you know what I mean? They're Bugler. And I remember Kane always had Camel non-filters. Camel non-filters were expensive. Now and then people would get them on special occasions, but he always had camel non-filters. And he'd be like, hey, what's up, homie? You want a front home? He was a very cool, very quiet, very respectful dude. And um, he wanted to soak up knowledge. <laughs> Excuse me. And um, I had got transferred out. Because I had got put up for transfer while I was in the shoe, and then they put me out there on B yard, waiting the waiting for the chain, and I think I waited four months, and then I got shipped out. You know, went to another institution, um, cara pegada over there immediately. Went back to the shoe, and so I get back out. I get back out of the shoe two years later, a little over two years later, right, and. Uh, Guess who's there? Mr. Kane. Mr. Kane's there. And uh, he's still a humble dude, quiet dude, very respectful. He always want to show love to everybody. If he knew you, like he said, hey, Holmes, what's up? And, you know, it was cool seeing him. But I noticed that he had um, figured out a little bit of stuff, you know. 
And I, I noticed, I paid attention to, you know, who he was hanging around with. So he, uh, like I said, he always wanted to soak up game. He always wanted to be uh, more knowledgeable, getting better. You know what I mean? And um, he was hanging around with the, the guys that had the loudest voice on the yard. And this is a weird thing to say, but I'll say this. The best hit that I ever saw, and I don't know if best is the right word. I just don't know. That's just the word I've always used when I refer to that, that pegada right there, that hit. Um, but Kane was involved in it. And I can say this because once I tell you the story, you'll, you'll understand. So I knew both individuals that were sent on this dude. You know, somebody had came and he was had a reputation and Corcoran Shoe was putting it down. But prison being prison, some stuff followed him and he was asking too many questions, too many of the wrong type of questions when he got to the Bay to B yard. And so um, two people were sent on him. Kane was one of them. And because this dude was known to have major hands, he got hit with major steel. You know, somebody like that, you know, that's that's why, you know, when you go back to the big youth thing, you know, you're, you're dealing with a group of people that when they know that somebody is a physical force, then the weapons used on him and the people sent on him will be adequate or more than adequate. And I remember it was that yard recall and the guy was walking by the, by the bathroom area headed towards his building. And I happened to look over because, you know, I was aware of, you know, what was gonna be happening. And I looked over to the area and they were on the other side of the fence, right? And I remember seeing the first, the first one that went, it went in this area here. And I just saw a puff of blood, like a spray, boom. And then it was it was go time. <clears throat> that was the the when I the reason why I say best. It, I, honestly, those guys, uh, Kane and and the, and the, the vato that was with him. The fact that the cops didn't kill one of them was amazing to me because when I tell you that they didn't want to get off of him. Um, I'm dead serious. Uh, fine, you know, at one point the cops were able to beat Kane off of him with the batons, and Kane took the brunt of that damage with the batons. And the, the guy that was with him, I remember, had his arm wrapped around the dude, and you just saw. And you usually don't see somebody with that big of emotion. It's usually more like this, because you don't want the tower to see what's happening. But he was bringing it all the way back and pushing it all the way through. And I remember the cops had the dude pulling him by his feet and his whole body was elevated, but his arm was wrapped around him and he had him in a death grip. But, you know, regardless of my man's intention, uh, you know, God's plan is always in effect and God chose to let that man survive that day. Um, it was one of the most brutal hits I ever saw. Um, amazing that the guy survived, but there's no coincidences. Everything happens for a reason. Just like me seeing this video this morning, and <clears throat> I guess I guess Kane was deported and he's in Japan. So like I said, if Kane sees this video, um, congratulations on getting out. Hopefully you're staying out. Hopefully you have a beautiful, huge family, a bunch of healthy kids. Um, you know, you know, and I know King, that time, that era in, in the Bay was extremely bu uh, brutal, extremely violent, and also very informative. It let men know exactly who they were. And so, like I said, uh, I wish you nothing but success. Hopefully, uh, you got a bunch of lowriders, a gorgeous wife, and uh, great health.
So with that, I'll go ahead and bring this to a close. Everybody, please be safe, be smart, and tell the ones that you love that you love them, right?